Good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this year's infrastructure review. I'm Nico Duck from, from the NOC. With me is Will. We got sent uh, two slides, which I will just like present before from the nice dude doing the um, logo fix on the building. So you all saw the CCC logo. He's doing that since a couple of years now, and uh, it's three meters in diameter and 25 kilograms heavy, the thing. Um, the goggly eyes above the door were the leftover parts of the sea and were properly recycled. And you maybe saw that little lounge in the entrance uh, with a hammock and some nice flags on the ball. He really tried to get that opened and approved, but someone who shall not be named deemed it unsafe to have public access to that area. So it was a nice art installation, but not that usable. Maybe next year we will see. Now we'll be at the knock. Um, this year's network was, had kind of some challenges. We had a new building, parts of the team changed. As always, um, parts of the infrastructure themselves changed. They renovated the building with multi-mode fibers, uh, which made it pretty hard, and we were all exhausted from camp this year. So it was a late start, late planning, late everything, and we were like, ah, at least our servers where we'll be here on time before everyone else arrives, because at the last events it was sometimes tricky to get the hardware, which will do all the monitoring, auto deployment up and running. We were like, hey, we will be here on Tuesday and Wednesday. The servers will arrive on, Monday, uh, on Tuesday. That's great. He joked, oh, maybe they'll arrive in Siglai Park on somewhere else, but they arrived. <laughs> Dead. So, yeah, that, that was kind of a challenge. Uh, we, we handled that packet corruption. Uh, it caused minor delays of like a day and some, some more gray hairs for the deployment. But in the end, it worked out. And as all you had Wi-Fi, um, we know it worked. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, as Nico mentioned, um, when they refurbished the building, uh, they, they refurbished, they did replace all the comms rooms, which is nice. Uh, we have uh, new shiny comms locations that are much easier to install equipment and not as hot as previously. Um, but uh, we had a lot of challenges with the fibers they chose to use between the comms rooms. Um, this, this diagram here is, is, is our core diagram for the, for the routers. Um, so we, we, um, we decided to do some tests. Um, we, we basically use some, some new standards of optics that can uh, actually have a chance of lighting uh, these fibers at 100 gig, because 100 gig is what we need. It's the technology of choice for the backbone. Um, so um, we basically are doing everything out of spec here. Um, most of these optics are rated to about 100 meters on uh, uh, this multi-mode fiber. Um, we, uh, we tested 100 gig LR1, which is like a 100 gig um, in a single stream, single lambda, um, the, and these two new standards, SR2 and SR1.2, um, and they are new standards for just getting a little bit more out of this old standard of fiber. Um, actually, the, the last set here have proved some of the best uh, in our tests. They're actually really only arrived in uh, Flex Optics about two weeks ago, so um, uh, it was really quite last minute. Um, it's uh, essentially what they're doing in there is they, they're actually doing forward error correction on the actual optic itself, which is quite clever. Um, so essentially, we're doing sums to uh, make the network run better. Uh, everyone lost some stats. Uh, we had four times 100 gig external connectivity with 35 gig of peak usage. Uh, we peaked just over 100,000 wireless users. Okay. Um, Eight routers, mostly in the basement, 180 switches, and 244 access points. Uh, we'll be starting to pull all that in in about an hour. It's going to be busy. Um, we had a bunch of people who gave us nice stuff. Um, I'm not going to read them all out now, um, but um, some of these are transit providers or equipment that we simply cannot rent or, or anything else. So uh, that's, we're very grateful that they were provided that for us. A big shout out to, to N at work the, in the bottom row. They delivered service here in Hamburg to us to replace the broken flight case. Within like, call them, they were, yeah, come, come over, pick something up. That was great, thanks.
and just some, some stuff on the YOLO caller, which is run by the NOC help desk, not the NOC themselves. Uh, mostly like uh, one gig port, but also some, some 10 gig copper, 10 gig fiber, 40 gig ports, around 11 kilowatt of power and over 100 IPv4 addresses used. And most of the people had problems with getting IPv6 neighbor discovery recovery configured properly. So that might be a reason why we had so low IPv6 usage uh, on our network, because most of the stuff in the colo was running on v4 only. Yeah. Can't change that. Now, over to the phone operation center. I'm Garvin from Eventphone, or you know us probably better as the Phone Operation Center, and we will present today uh, together with the GSM team, and Luxi will do this, but I will start from our part first. Um, so we arrived on day minus four, and we expected working infrastructure, and then we had a quick chat with the NOC, and they told us about the fuck up. Um, nonetheless, we were amazed. Everything was up and running really quickly, even though there were problems. So. Uh, we expected working infrastructure on day minus two, and I guess this kind of worked out uh, very nicely. So you had first deck connectivity on minus two, still uh, growing, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, so big thanks to the NOC. I think this is not very new. We now have for multiple years, even for the congresses in Leipzig, we already had this IP-based deck system um, where we really rely on the NOC for connectivity. So thanks a lot. We really love you guys. <laughs> um, the next thing that is really a kind of new thing is that we this year together with the GSM team did the help desk uh, on one place and uh, manned all of this together. So there is now the common phone help desk. Um, to have a better customer experience for people using all kind of phones because we run the DEC system, the ZIP system, and the, like, the mainframe telephony background, but the GSM people really um, run the GSM parts, so the RF parts, um, and we can now like, move people back and forth just by like, saying, well, go to the next person on this desk. Um, so it seems like this is now three-angular relation. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we also had some challenges. Uh, we thought, well, let's kick out all of the spinning disks of our servers and replace them with super fancy SSDs, which are faster. Um, turns out, well, um, they didn't work out quite well, and we had like Postgres query times in the order of like 20 to 30 seconds for one query. Similar, just single insert. Um, this didn't really work out, so uh, we had really forced busy states, which caused a lot of trouble. Uh, we kicked them out, replaced them, thanks to people who uh, were really helpful uh, giving us replacement hardware on during Christmas, just uh, very quickly and without asking. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, we had some additional problems in our core. Uh, that caused some deadlocks and maybe people have noticed that there were some problems with the deck registration and this had a few hiccups, but uh, thanks to our amazing team, this was really also fixed on site and it's now working in, in a reliable manner for, I guess, two days. Um, and for us also, this is the first event in the new renovated uh, CCH. Um, there were some changes to find everything again, to really do a massive multi-level uh, in, in terms of multi-story event uh, with our system. And we had one big challenge also, we had control DDoS on our system because someone said, well, let's invent pixel flute via zip. Um, <laughs> this then, <laughs> this looks like this. So you can call some number to set a pixel, and this caused quite some calls, and well, it stress tested the system, and it didn't 100% survive, and we need to look into it, but thanks for this great reality check. <laughs> yeah, just some few numbers. We had like 120 uh, Orga loan decks that we handed out. We deployed over 50 SIP phones. Uh, we had over, roughly over 50 decked antennas here in the building and nine remotely via VPN in several locations throughout Germany that were then also live connected to the system. 
Um, and there is the new blind deck service where you can register yourself, um, have some nice message and get in touch with uh, new other people, get to know other nerds. There is quite some numbers that you can reach it. It was in the end 115 registered users. We had like eight matches connected and the biggest problem was a lot of users are not reachable. So uh, if you want to use it in the future, make sure you're available, otherwise you can't be matched, or rather your match can't not be like transferred to you. Um, we had like in the end 7,000 configured, over 7,600 configured extensions, uh, 4,200 configured deck phones and like 2,700 concurrent at this event here, which isn't kind which isn't really the number, the, the maximum number that we had in the end in Leipzig, but I guess this was to be expected. Um, but we expect from the community that you make us break the record next year. So bring more decked, call more decked phones. And thanks a lot. Um, there is the, in Vienna we had a talk about how the telephony system works. If you're inspired, if, if, you, if you're interested and want to know how it works. And um, there is the internal plan to maybe present on the next Easter hack again, but no promises. <laughs> so then, let's continue. Yeah, as uh, usual, we uh, also built up a GSM network and this year only LTE. So, um, yeah, we also tried to be quite early here. Our team also changed a lot. Um, new people arrived, other people left. Uh, yeah, we arrived a little bit earlier as a POC, as usually it quite works well, at least on day four. Um, we managed to get on day zero the first calls and everything working. Yeah, the 4G was a little bit special as usual. Um, the biggest problem for us is to get the frequencies for um, to provide such network because everything is sold out. There aren't any f free frequencies, so uh, we got uh, five Arscans or five channels in 1800, which every phone supports. Uh, this was uh, sponsored. Um, further, we got uh, 4G um, frequencies, which are in the small niche. It's actually US band and not used in Europe uh, from the Bonnets Netzagen tour. Um, also thanks to the Deutsche Telekom for loaning us and they were quite quick in, in giving us the, the spectrum. Really nice. Yeah, this year we had uh, seven uh, 2G base stations, 12 4G E-Node Bs. Uh, we had one macrocell, uh, which supports quite a lot of power, but we only were allowed to, I think, less than 1% of its actually supported power. So this is a usual common setup. You see here a 2G small cell and a 4G um, yeah, femto cell. Um, I think this was close to the info desk. Uh, yeah, here's some, some stats about it, around 1,000 active users. Um, we also had a couple of cell broadcasts, and as you see, we also uh, started tracking the stability. 2G was really quick, really nice this time, uh, quite stable. We are using the Osmocom stack, and yeah, the 4G, we are still continue developing. It's open 5GS, and yeah, it's, we are hoping to get it to zero, but... Yeah, we are still working on it. It's also really nice to test with so many users. Yeah, the quality, so basically if you just wanted to have voice calls, you could disable the 4G also in the Guru from the POC. Um, you deselect and have, should have had really stable voice calls and really, really slow 2G data. I think maybe a couple of kilobits per second and 4G, we, we had a couple of megabits you could get. And we also have a couple of challenges for the next year. And uh, yeah, that was it. Thanks to all the angels who helped us at, the, at our help desk and building everything up. Hello, we are from C3 Power. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm E2K and this is Fahios. And uh, as you already told, we are from C3 Power. Um, we are responsible for the 
uh, energy department, if you like to, um, so for the electricity and stuff. Um, we managed to, to arrange some KPIs for you. Um, <laughs> as many of you may know, um, our department has much more lo lo uh, logistics to do than uh, many other departments here. And um, so it's now on this, uh, and on, on this event, we had uh, 200 flight cases in total with material uh, that was uh, borrowed at uh, three companies, or four, I think. Uh, we have 17,500 meters of Shuko cable uh, in, few, in a few lengths that were um, used here in the building, as well as 100 meter uh, CE 16 amps, uh, 550 meters CE 32 amps, and 500 meter CE 30, uh, 63 amps. Uh, unfortunately, no CE 125 this year. Uh, because the the house changed a bit of the of the installation here, so we're not able we were not able to use it here. Um, we had 65 distribution boxes in total uh, of um, many kinds. Um, Fayos will say a bit uh, a few words about um, the latest generation of them uh, later in this uh, in, in our part here. And. Um, we had a pretty cool team this year. We were uh, enough people to load balance uh, in, a, in a very, very nice manner. And um, so this resulted in an in a, um, average power hotline waiting time of nearly zero seconds. Um, so we were uh, reachable around, around the clock. And this uh, worked quite well, this event. So I want to thank our team for that. Broken equipment is something that we uh, know from the most events that we, that we uh, arrange um, and just distribute with power. So it was in this year. We got a few broken cables. Uh, we, um, we have some of them here for you. Those are... Um, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were a bit... Uh, let's, let's just not talk about it. <laughs> And uh, we had, uh, we had um, a nice visit from the local fire department <laughs> at uh, 2 o'clock, I don't know on, on which day. And um, yeah, uh, it was a faulty, a faulty, um, faulty light um, that blew up in the middle of the night and um, yeah, that caused smoke and the fire department arrived. Yeah, but nothing special happened. So, your part. So, thank you, Dominic. Um, today, we, this year we got some really nice distros from Nicklen, which is our, our main rental company. It has like a 63 to 4 times Harting connector, which is really nice to distribute. And every Harting has six RCBOs, so um, it's really good that it, it's... Um, yeah, it's just really good. <laughs> And it has uh, Ethernet jacks and uh, per outlet current metering, which is quite nice. This is the box. It has like fancy displays and stuff. And it even has like a very nice web UI where you can see different things. This is the Yolo Colo, which uh, performed really bad at um, getting power. So please use more power, maybe. <laughs> And uh, somebody from our team uh, hacked together some Go and uh, blew that into an uh, influx DB, which really burned. So we had this nice graph at c3power.top. You can all visit it. Yeah, and teardown already started at noon, and we are heavily on it. Thank you for our team. Let's see if this works. Yeah, we are from Civil Work. We are those people with video and winkle cuts, commonly known for this. And let's have a look at the number wing. We had, as usual, a lot of viewers in stream, a lot with stream traffic, 10 terabytes of content during the event, 200,000 views on the talks, 100 talks released by now. That's um, nearly all. But
but some still missing due to difficult technical difficulties. And we have about 500 gigabytes of cache, but still 10 percent, 7 percent IO weight. If someone has SSDs and wants to donate them to us, please come. We will be happy to optimize this issue. Great. Then we come to the not so boring numbers. Um, the average help desk waiting time during business hours was like only one ring, and if there were like people calling actually uh, with decked or they were like in front of the desk, it was only two rings times. So it was not so long waiting time. Uh, our business hours at the help desk were basically from nine to the other five, so nine a.m. to. Uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, so a really long time at the help desk. And this year's pool of angels was about 310 AV angels. So thank you very much for all of them who helped us on the cameras, the AV angels in general. So thanks for that. Now, now to the not so boring facts. People like Pilke Beauty and Trains. Uh, a big shout out to all those evacuation angels standing at the doors during the talks in the H Hall 1. It was really hot up there, so thank you for your work. It was really great having you there, making this whole stuff possible. <laughs> A big new, the pausen music was not in played or only played in Hall 1, it was in every hall. And it's called Meshle by Fear of Ghosts. So look it up if you want to have it at home while wait, ma wait, making your tea. Then there was a strange case of uh, async audio that we discovered. Uh, so many talks showed that there was AV delays and that were not part of the source material. And then we did a bit of investigation and that showed that random bytes in the fuse file system appeared and it turned out that the current IP is um, strangely profit from Utexas. And the funny thing is that this box has been run or encoding change for actually years and we never discovered it. So that's a new thing that we discovered this Congress. <laughs> Now, let's have a look at the infrastructure at our lecture hall. This year, we just used our own setup with no external help, and the only thing we get was some cameras from some friends and family. This time, we tried automatic audio leveling for streamed audio. It didn't work as expected. In the end, we have just a simple manual leveling. And it turned out that the um, VGA port turned out as, as a simple micro HDMI port. No one expected. We connected our VGA at that equipment and was wondering because nothing came out and it was distorted. Then there was an infrastructure that was not in the lecture halls. There is not much on the slides here. Well, maybe we could have put a bit more in it, but we didn't. Well, yeah. <laughs> so there was a new web player that was measuring the streaming quality in general. And then this slide is not supposed to look like this. But <laughs> um, the thing is that during the first day, many people were asking where the talks, um, they waited for the talks, and we had a bit of problems in releasing them because we had to wait for the intros and outros to cut them in. Um, so that took a while, but in the end, uh, we finally started like encoding the videos around like in the afternoon of the day one, and in the evening of uh, day one, we finally released the first talk. So they took a while this year, but in the end, they're there. <laughs> And, and, and now to the famous info beamer. We had about 2,000 combinations of slides of permutation on the first day. At day four, it were 300,000 combinations. And there was about over 250 submissions. And we had one from the compliant, from the Geheim organization. We managed the satellite without involving the arbitration board or DPL. So thank you for that. Hi, I'm Kaste. I'm here for the, for the interpreters. Those are the lovely folks over in the back or in some rooms on the side. They... Thanks. Um, I'm, that's probably broken. <laughs> I don't know if you want to regenerate the slide. Anyway, that was a picture out of the booth, so you see the way we see the room. Um, usually the back of your head. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, this year was uh, obviously full of challenges, as it was for everybody. Um, the, the long gap hit us hard on the second language, so what we do is um, we make it accessible. We give the speakers a voice in another language that they don't speak in the talk, and especially make it available for uh, people who don't speak the language that is given. 
mostly important for um, non-English speakers and uh, we have a big group of French people, for example, that help us out a lot in that department. Um, we ha so we have two teams, sub-teams. We are the German-English team and we are the bonus other or whatever we call them. <laughs> we, we haven't settled on a name. But um, they do everything else. So if you've ever heard us uh, do a Swiss translation for uh, one of the fun talks in the evening, that's the other team. We have French, we have Spanish, we have Chinese, we have Arabic, whatever makes sense for the talk usually, um, depending on the topic. So, and our team shrunk quite a bit over the, um, over the pandemic and the gap that this gave us. We still managed to do everything for German and English, but unfortunately the other team only had a chance for about a third of it. So, um, if you feel up to it, we'd love to have you. Um, we take anyone who's, who feels good about it and we'll help you. Um, the Swedish one is especially fun because we picked up a, a drunk, nice person at a bar. <laughs> 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 and uh, they helped us out. So if you want to be part of that, then go for it. Um, as I said, about a third for the, for the others and all of it for the rest. If you want to help us, it would be great. Um, we spend 800 hours in there, in, mostly in the booths, some, some in the prep beforehand. But those are just the boring stats. The more interesting part is um, we have a few firsts. We are now intergenerational, same as a few other teams. Uh, the first people, well, obviously a lot of people started having kids a few years ago, and now they grow up to the size that they can actually start helping out. So we have our first father and son team in the booth, which is really amazing for me. Um, if you haven't seen the talk uh, about Frag den Staat, the, the rap translation was fire. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> really awesome. And we have another first that's probably not on the slide. We have the first time that we actually interpreted off of the sign language. Usually it's the other way around. Uh, if, if you come from that area, you know that's really interesting and hard. Yeah, that's us. That's it. Hi, I'm Kati and I'm talking for the assemblies team. You might know, okay, this is a congress, we want to see people, and where do we see the people in the assembly halls, basically? Um, we do all the shit some people don't want to do, and we organize everything and try to find nice neighbors for you. Um, I have some hard facts for you. Uh, this, by the way, is hall three when it was still empty, uh, before the event started, so... Uh, Unfortunately, the picture is a little too big for the screen, but uh, you should get a guess how the how this structure used to, yeah, was set up and how it looked like when there was nothing on the tables. Um, the most fun for us um, was uh, weird. Or, um, I'm just thinking there's there's some some stuff missing before because the uh, yeah because the slide is kind of wrong, so I don't have the numbers right. Um, what do we do? I had, some, I had some numbers, but um, I, can, I can just recall most of them, I guess. Um, we had 308 assemblies on the place. Um, we had around, I think, 40,000 shares on 12,500 square meters, which is quite a lot of space if you see everything. Um, let's see, something else I can remember. 200 tickets in our ticket system. Uh, various questions also answered on metrics and everything, so we were always able to, to give you an answer if you had questions. Um, yeah, well, what, what, was there something else? I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Doesn't matter anyway. Um, but we had some fun requests for placings because, you know, basically most people just build up some kind of assembly, have a regional group or something, but some people have special needs, and that's what we're also there for. Um, this, by the way, was the planning session we had in front right before the event started. We spent around 12 hours of placing assemblies to make sure most of it fits. It, it doesn't always work out right, but we're trying our best. Um, there was... All <laughs> Um, we, we actually, that's something I remember now, we had 10 relocations because um, Durchzug is happening. 
Um, you, you might remember Hall for Year 3. It was quite windy in front, and there were tables. We don't do that next time. Um, well, yeah, there was this golden bathtub. Funny thing is when we heard that on day zero, people told us, okay, we want to bring a golden bathtub. And we were like, okay, what kind of space do we have for a bathtub? I mean, and we figure out, okay, it's just a small one, tiny one just to sit in. So it was some art project, it was some theater project. And that, that was a prop that was just standing uh, next to Foyer Z. Um, then there's Olga. Some of you might know Olga. Um, it belongs to Chaos West, but we decided to give it a little different place because and everyone walking there can see it and it's nice and cozy and it doesn't uh, break when someone runs into it because there's no way to run into it. Um, last thing is, we had an electron microscope. Well, um, we had a request, I think, on day minus two or something, where people told us, okay, we have a pallet with an electron microscope. Okay, we figured out with luck, but uh, if you want to see it, I think it's still standing in four year three. Um, yeah, um, there's a QR code. If you're helping out during the teardown, starting at seven, uh, you're most welcome to, uh, to get a badge on the hub. Yes? Do you have the URL here next to it? Huh? Can I find the URL and clear text somewhere? Uh, you might post it on Mastodon, I'm not really sure. Um, one thing we want to tell you now, you, now you've seen the building, get ideas how we can make it better next time, because it was really great, but I think we can make it even greater. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, we are from the Hub team. Um, we are doing that stuff with the badges as well. Um, so, yeah, what we do, um, you probably have seen that uh, start page um, where you can find the assemblies, you can find the uh, individual events, and most importantly, self organized sessions as well. Um, we had um, quite a few of them. Um, we do more stuff in the background, like uh, the assembly auger is um, doing the management of the assemblies there, um, but that part is mostly hidden for the general public, so, and not that interesting, it's ba basically a database interface. Um, in the screenshot you see parts of the wiki as well, so uh, yeah, we had uh, the most uh, frequently asked question is, uh, why don't I have permission to edit the dating page? Um, because someone else is editing it. Uh, yeah. Um, how we do it? Um, we, um, well, what, what we do is we integrate different uh, schedules. Um, we had four main sources this year, uh, and a fifth one, but uh, yeah, four main ones, the official uh, fire plan, um, fire shanks, Hexen, and Zendetzentrum. Uh, we, yeah throw them together, we throw in the fifth one, which is self-organized sessions, and the assembly organized sessions, and yeah, mix them together, uh, do room booking, uh, so probably you organize a self-organized session yourself, and uh, yeah, got the message that the room is already blocked at the time slot you wanted to do it, and needed to find another one. Sorry for that, but uh, physical limitation. And uh, yeah, all that stuff, what we do, uh, we um, put it out again. Uh, one external yeah, recipient of our, of our API is C3NAV, uh, 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 who get uh, our, uh, the points where the assembly team plays the assemblies. Uh, that comes from us. We uh, are a source for the InfoBeamer, so the um, yeah, schedule information you see on the screens uh, here um, is sourced by the hub, uh, or at the hub, and we have uh, the yeah, apps um, for both Android and iOS. We don't do them, but we uh, are the source for their data. Yeah, that's uh, basically uh, what we do. Uh, in numbers, uh, assemblies in the system, 299. Um, that 
count is a bit off to the one from the assembly team because we, are, we have some uh, technical assemblies in there as well to uh, manage stuff. Uh, in total, we had um, close to 1,000 events in the system, um, several official ones from the imported sources, but uh, from assemblies and self-organized events as well. And if you look at the numbers, uh, quite impressive in comparison to the official uh, schedule. Um, badges uh, is that uh, shiny feature uh, where you can uh, hunt down uh, on the Congress to explore stuff and uh, get a virtual badge. Uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, it's a rather new feature. The whole st thing is a rather new uh, thing for the Congress, at least. And yeah, didn't work out that well this year. Um, not that interesting, or not that good communicated yet. Uh, we will improve on that uh, next time. Um, projects um, as a display, what you do, what you bring with you, um, can be improved as well, but again, we need to do more communication and yeah, what we need to do more is testing in advance. Uh, we had a lot of uh, issues, a uh, lot of uh, import sources which changed shortly before the Congress because people woke up and yeah, then we had to adapt as well. Yeah, uh, was a lot of work, but uh, right now it's working. But uh, yeah, we had a little happy accident. Yes, um, one of the main uh, incidents we had with the hub during this event was that um, we had a lot of functionality already built in, but we also added functionality during uh, the event. And of course, uh, if functionality has no UI yet, the feature is not fully developed. So for the self-organized sessions, uh, most of the self-organized sessions just had one speaker, right? And there, were, uh, there was one organized session that uh, wanted to have two speakers. So of course, what we did was add this uh, person to the self-organized session, add it to the database. Uh, and many of you already guess what would happen. Um, as soon as the self-organized session got their room, so they selected a room where they wanted to participate in or wanted to hold the session in, uh, that got added to the schedule. Unfortunately, that broke the schedule, so uh, the schedule could no longer uh, regenerate. Um, we had built in a cache, we were forward thinking, but unfortunately after the cache expired, um, any request for the schedule built up a huge database query. So this is one of our largest database queries because it needs all the events, all the rooms, and so on, and so on. In the end, we had an uh, average uh, bandwidth to our database between our Docker containers of 100 Mbit per second. So <laughs> that's quite a lot. And of course, this caused a lot of uh, traffic. But fortunately, as soon as we found the issue, we could remove uh, the speaker from the self-organized session, and everything went back up. Um, Fortunately for us, um, a lot of our uh, apps and a lot of our systems that uh, ingest our schedule were able to uh, do a stopgap measure, uh, help us uh, uh, mitigate some of the impact this uh, outage would have had. So a lot of thanks to them for handling this issue in the meantime while we fixed our internal stuff. And um, <laughs> thank you. One of the uh, apps that, as uh, we already said, is not uh, developed by us, but that ingests uh, our data is the iOS Farplan app. Uh, the developer didn't uh, want to uh, come up here. Uh, he just wanted, to tell, uh, uh, wanted us to tell you that it's basically the same app uh, that you have known uh, from uh, other Chaos events, where you have iOS and uh, watchOS and other uh, Mac-related OS uh, things. Uh, with this app, and he has about 6,500 users, uh, as he guesses it. And then there is the other app, and this will be the next speaker. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Android app. Uh, that's what I'm doing since uh, 10 years about. And... Um, uh, a couple of you used the Android app, it seems. So there's, uh, by half an hour ago, uh, 3,600 installs. That's a bit uh, of a delay by Google Play, uh, because they uh, will present numbers tomorrow. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, 
It seems you were a bit eager to come to a real Congress because uh, already on the 26th of December there were um, 2,000 something installs, uh, so people uh, were a bit hungry, I guess. Um, other than that, um, there is, uh, of course, feedback from you, uh, which was uh, always welcome. Um, there is about uh, 14 now uh, textual reviews where people request features or uh, discuss bugs. And uh, uh, ratings went up, I think, to like 30. Um, there could be a higher ratio, so don't be shy, uh, reach out. Uh, you don't have to do that on Google Play, you can also reach me by email or uh, on different channels. Um, new thing this year, uh, I distributed like 5,000 stickers on the Congress. If you don't get them, uh, there's this stick uh, for the um, project behind the Farplan app and you can get them here if you want. Um, as I said, I found this uh, feedback pretty speaking. Uh, people were really, really eager to get the app. That wasn't the case in last year's uh, numbers normally went, go up over the days, but this time was very fast. Uh, there was not too many fuck ups, so I could sleep very well. Um, I did not release uh, a new version, just one version was out there all the time. So. Uh, overall, people were not affected by crashes. Um, there was one interesting uh, effect that I wasn't prepared for. So normally, um, what should happen is if you load the angle, uh, the angel shifts into your app, then the gray column comes up. So everything has to be shifted by once. Turns out there's an indexing uh, problem, which um, uh, made the indexes go up to 89, and then a friend said, that's not too bad, that's 89 days of Congress. <laughs> so, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Zorian from Chaos Emergency Response Team, and some general effects. We literally rolled out the red carpet for our patients, which also prevented uh, the original one from turning red. We had five treatment stations and one for isolation. Uh, we have got in our stock about uh, 16,000 uh, uh, articles in over 500 types. It took us five days of waiting for delayed deliveries, and our runner shifts really do what it sound, sounds like. Uh, they walked over 1,000 kilometers. Uh, we handed out about 110 uh, liters WHO drink, and we had uh, 100 and uh, 86 third angels working during the night. <laughs> Let's head over to more patient-related stats. Uh, we had about 857 entries in our operation diary. We had about uh, 355 cases uh, at third with at least uh, 100 patches on people. About <laughs> adult ones, about 16 on children. Uh, we had 13 times um, related to uh, soldering and five times related to broken bottles. Well, our um, third angels are really working fast. Uh, our median treatment time is five minutes. This concludes uh, our contribution from CERT. Thank you. And now a short um, contribution from the Air Cleaning Operation Center. Uh, they had 18 air filters in operation, which cleaned about uh, uh, 2,160 operating hours and about uh, 14,000 cubic meters of air power. And the next team will be Infektionsschutz, Infection Prevention. Hello everybody, I'm Avara from Infektionsschutz and um, let's start with some Infektionsschutz impressions. 
Here we have the uh, chaos infection shots. You see one of our testing and um, mask distribution points and the fairy dust in the background. Then we had our test center in the uh, entrance hall. Uh, you could grab uh, tests and masks there and also test yourself on site. It was quite nice. And, uh, oh, the picture is actually, there's more boxes on top. That's just one day of testing and uh, distributing masks. Let's get some statistics. We distributed around 17,000 FFP2 masks and about 15,000 self-tests. And you can see in the bottom right corner, uh, small, the um, mask and test distribution per day. We, because we had such data, we tried to um, calculate and look into the future. <laughs> So we distributed 17,000 masks this year. We did some quick math uh, mathematical calculations. And next year we expect 66,000 masks. And uh, the year after that, 250,000 masks. So good luck to lock with your high bay warehouse. They need to build for that. <laughs> Also, special thanks to C3CAT for providing additional safety equipment. And a special thanks to our Antivirale Aktion Angels. There were more than 150 of you, and uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much. Next up is Heaven. Hello Hamburg, hello Internet. I'm Razel from Heaven and we will show you a few things about what we did deploying all the awesome volunteers here. Um, after Hamburg we got a new home. We went to Hall X, um, as you all know, formerly known as Twitter, as we were reminded on the doors. And we were the first contact point of angels attending to our lovely event. And we also grabbed a few data points from our angel system uh, this uh, morning. Um, I can correct the, the first number because we were eager to know if we reached the 5,000 angels, but we didn't at around 70 were left to that. And um, from these people, around 4,000 angels arrived and a few less did at least one shift. So. There was much to do, as you can see, we had about roughly three years time of plan shifts and roughly the same number of entries where we take dates and unplanned things and get a work log. So we had much, much things to do. And uh, since we all need to do and create the shifts, we also looked in our uh, logs and um, yeah, you see more than 56 uh, uh, 56,000 events, though so much for privacy. We will incinerate it after the event, so the C3 dumpster fire should like that. And since our angels also need something to eat, we had uh, some awesome people uh, beside the Mackies that provided uh, rolls for everyone, and we got around 3,000 for that. So also thanks so, so much for the Brötchen manufacturer for feeding our angels. Last but not least, it's also repetitive to say, but this event also has only been possible by the initiative of all the volunteers, helping here, helping before the event, and also doing tear down. So Heaven says uh, to you, thank you for your work. Um, we are, you're very welcome, and we don't could do this without you. And also on an extra note, we had some issues with these epidemic events regarding the last year events. So we had some people who do the build up but had to leave early because they got infected. And so we wanted to see uh, and say thank you that you did build up. Um, get well soon and we hope to see on the next event that you can attend it properly with us. Thank you so much. Have a good night and bye.
Welcome, this is Daniel and I'm Qubit and we are here to represent the Fashion Operations Center. We are tasked with handing out merchandise at the Congress and other CCC events. For this year's Congress we had eight products with a total of 78 size variations, totaling 9,509 items delivered to the CCH here, excluding Andrew's uh, shirts. You can see the, the different colors and products over there. We mostly had uh, shirts in black and then zippers in black. And of those 9,500 items, around 3.7K were pre-ordered. And 90% of the pre-ordered items were picked up on day one. And we are very thankful for that because that meant we could prepare open sale that started on day two. Only 33 items were not picked up after the deadline, which is like a really low failure rate. So thanks for that as well. In order to crunch the queue, we need to crunch some numbers. So here's an availability chart of the items. You can see if you did pre-order, we had almost all the items available to you, except for some mishaps. And then when the open sale started on day two, first things to be sold out were black hoodies. And uh, now we only have some fitted shirt sizes left. And then on day two, things got pretty rough. But we had some old merch available for you to pick up at a great discount. Yeah, so after numbers, maybe depending on when you came to our happy place, um, where we strive to make you look good for the next year, it looks a bit like this when we arrive, so there's tons of boxes. Uh, most of these boxes are not sorted by whatever is in the boxes, so we spend a lot of time actually figuring out what was packed in what, what box and make sense of all of it. In the end, this year we really you know, excelled in preparing for the last year even. All of the old merch has been folded. It has been packed up in boxes again, and uh, we've actually managed to sell so many things from the past Congresses, even that we are starting with pretty much of a clean slate for next year. Um, 1,494 items were packed. Generally, uh, in our small place, we are one of the teams that can only start working whenever all of you arrived. So it's not so much preparation, but once we start opening, it gets quite busy. So in order to try to minimize the queue that we have so you all have, don't have to wait so long, uh, it was 923 angel hours in total with around 30 angels peaking uh, that were helping to make sure that everybody gets what they want and don't have to wait for it so long. And as you can see in the picture below, we are not you know, shy of anything. We even have people playing the pipe to attract you, to sell you stuff that you might not need, but you know, whatever. Make sure that we don't require so much space in the storage area. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. This only works with a lot of people that are really happy to make you happy. So we are representing a team here. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks for your patience, your understanding, and see you next year in the happy place of the Fashion Operations Center. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike from the Chaos Mentors. Uh, the Chaos Mentors, we, we've been welcoming first-time visitors and underrepresented minorities uh, to Congress every year, and we pair them up with, with experienced mentors, and we've been doing this since about uh, 30 C3. Uh, mentors can register on, on our, on our on our system, they tell, they tell a little bit about themselves and we match them up into groups and we hopefully create a bit of synergy inside the groups so that the new mentees can have an amazing Congress. This year we had 18 mentors and 83 mentees and um, we had 14 unicorns sprinkled throughout our assembly area and, pre and that's it. Uh, I wanna thank uh, the Chaos Mentor crew and all the people that helped make this an amazing event this year. Fragilent, Azriel, Yali, Ali, Linny, Lenny, uh, Tagus House Chaos, Nuclear, and uh, Martel uh, for making an amazing event this year. And we're looking forward to seeing the mentees grow up in our community and hopefully they'll become chaos mentors in years to come. Hello, I'm Trilator and I'm here to deliver the uh, Chaos Post report for this Congress. 
Um, we had some just-in-time delivered postcards, so you may notice um, there is a big picture of Hall 3 as it is on this Congress, and also the CCH as it is at this Congress, and also some other nice postcards. Uh, we got those delivered on day three. Um, we sent about 4,000 postcards, or 4.3 thousand postcards. This is from like uh, noon today. Uh, most of them went to Germany. Most of the others that didn't go there uh, are going to 80, no, 58 uh, other countries. That's not Germany. We had some internal mail. We don't count those. However, we used about uh, 38,000 postcards. Maybe ish. Um, we have mails for um, 98 future and other events. Um, people submitted yeah, over 600 postcards by the online office, and basically half of them were already delivered by 12 this today. We offered quite a few services. You see a mailbox here. Um, we had seven people where we got uh, birthday celebration deliveries. Um, we did sticker operation uh, support where we delivered their mail. We had a rally where people could go and do some tasks and get a nice reward at the end. That was about 100 people that did it. We had four types of solving proposals, so basically fill out texts. We had typewriters, we had uh, mailboxes at various places, and also um, we had air mail, so basically somebody made a paper plane out of a postcard and uh, delivered it through the foyer, so um, that's new. Um, we want to t thank all our chaos carriers for um, delivering mail and investing quite a bit of time on researching tricky cases. Um, our portal Beratungsengel for making it possible to actually get back office work done, and uh, all of you for writing all the postcards. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Enrico, I'm from the kids space here, uh, and a question to you, who of you brought kids to the Congress? Okay, so a couple of them, um, they arrived at uh, different um, yeah, areas that we had, we had like two rooms um, for all of them, and we tried to unlock like the next generation, and I probably think that some of you um, already saw many, many kids here, um, which was amazing. So we had like an action zone. Um, we tried to collect some numbers for you. So we had three unicorns. We had six large tentacles. Uh, did anyone of you see them? Okay, so some of them, maybe there are some pictures uh, in the internet. We had like seven fish. We had like an underwater world that we kind of built up. Um, we had like amazing Esther bricks, which are like large Legos um, that we ordered for the Congress and are uh, thankful for the donations that we got uh, so that we could make this possible. We had uh, 1,024 liters of uh, Lego Duplo bricks in there, which were uh, capable of building like huge uh, structures uh, that we even need to take care of so that it just fall on anybody. Um, we had an arcade there with over 3,000 uh, different games and uh, someone took over the part of counting all the balls in a ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't trust these numbers, you can just go there and, uh, or it's, it's down below, so go there and uh, check it out. <laughs> okay, so also we have a creative zone there, um, which um, hosted many of different workshops. We had books there, we had lots of pencils, uh, we had board games, uh, we even had some RPG rounds um, that uh, taught the tiny uh, kids or the little ones um, how to do this and um, how to get into this world of uh, role play um, gaming. We had a hack center, we had different game servers, Minecraft servers, and we counted that we had over 5,400 day and night shifts on those servers. Um, yeah, we have countless ideas for the future. Um, so one, one message for you out there, if you ever think about uh, bringing your kids to those uh, events, um, it's amazing, it's a good experience. We have like babies to, uh, to elder ones that go to the uh, Jugend Hacked um, and stuff like that. So it's really an amazing experience. And also thank, thank you for all the angels, all the uh, teams that organized this in, uh, before and after after, um, and also, uh, yeah, thanks for everyone for making this a safe place for children. Thank you. So uh, we are Ninana and uh, Blood 
from the uh, TOC, which is the tape operation system. And actually we formed only yesterday, so I guess we're one of the uh, youngest, but probably also the best one of the best organized operating <laughs> centers <laughs> here at the Congress. So our main goals are to raise tape awareness here in CCCH, um, to protect the CCH from tape damage. So our primary principles are be excellent to CCH because this building says feelings too. Um, and the second one is science and art. So we preserve them, we don't change them. So we change the tape. So um, we use quite a lot of resources actually since yesterday. So um, during our action, <laughs> we used uh, 265.42 uh, meters of certified tape. This one. This one. Only use this one. On <laughs> so, so to protect the, this building, only use the certified tape from TOC. You can call us one TOC. And. Uh, we removed quite the same amount, which was uh, 255 meters and 65 meters of vicious tape, which will damage uh, CCH. Um, we used uh, 20 angel hours, um, and during, during our service, we walked around 180 kilometers or 230,000 steps. We used up two packages of blister tape, uh, drank eight liters of mate, and uh, we also used quite a, up quite a lot of patients from the visitors. We estimate around 10K. And last but not least. Yeah, we saved uh, one relationship, and this is a quite um, important one. We saved the relationship between heaven and hell. So the heaven and lock. So. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we hope to return next year even better. So thanks all of you. Thanks for all the amazing teams we have here. Um, I'm from a rather unknown team, which is kind of good to know that we are not there um, because we have a serious business to do. Um, since this is a really formal event, as you all know, um, we had to approach our guests and to get their um, satisfactory reports on this event because we want to improve. And the uh, Chaos Computer Club Veranstaltungsgesellschaft MBH, which is probably hard to translate for all the signal angels out there, um, is really interested in making this a better experience for all technical oriented people, which you are, and which is our target audience. So, which made us, the, or which gave us the task of approaching people who actually just wanted to leave this event by giving them a tedious amount of questions to answer just right before they could leave. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so we actually only included, of course, the answers which were uh, in our political agenda and dropped all the others. And I'm really glad that so many people took part in our questionnaire and get, made us really good answers. What kind of questions did we ask? Of course, we first asked, why are you leaving this event? Which is a good question to ask, but most people just wanted to go to bed and said, <laughs> oh, does it take long? Uh, others said, oh, I just want to go outside and smoke. I'll be back in two minutes and we said no you won't be back in two minutes because this takes more than two minutes we are doing here <laughs> and six person claimed they have a social life out of the congress which we really doubt <laughs> yeah um, then we made of course the questionnaire which day of the event is the best day for you and this is really interesting that there are people who actually like day five which is tomorrow uh, <laughs> uh, we don't know why they're doing that but uh, probably they want to have a longer Congress, so probably that's the reason why. And nobody likes day four, which I don't know, because day four is amazing as all the other days, thanks to all the teams we just heard, of course. Um, yeah, we then... <laughs> we then ask a rather difficult question in the chaos world. Because as you all know, we have these angels. 
our volunteers. They're doing an amazing job. But since Congress and all the events we're doing are now getting more professional each time, there's a long discussion about whether they should be addressed formally or informal as we're doing it now. And this is a thing we, of course, ask whether we should approach or whether we address our angels in the future in a more formal way. And as you can see, the results are pretty clear what we should do there. <laughs> Um, and then we ask a rather long question in German, which won't be smaller in English. And really big shout out to Mahe, who does, who's done the template for all the slides and who had to, do, had to live with my style of putting information in the title, um, which was not supposed to do in this template, I think. Um, but the question which is asked here is, um, since the event location is now a bit smaller than Leipzig and since we could probably run out of space, we wanted to ask whether there is an assembly which people did not visit and which we could drop off. And, it was surprising that 95% uh, of the people we asked did not know which assembly they did not attend. So <laughs> we have no idea whether they couldn't help us with this question. Um, then there was, of course, a question how they liked the fairground in Leipzig. Um, <laughs> Some people ask us, uh, well, I think we are in Hamburg, right? Um, but there were actually people who tried to answer this question seriously. Um, I don't know why. So, um, but everybody likes it, basically. Um, then we asked, of course, how they got the ticket to this event, and we put up some rather strange answers. Um, <laughs> Actually, somebody claimed they bought it in a DB Reisemark, which is some internal thing from Deutsche Bahn. Some said they bought it in a local pre-sales office. Others said they bought it in a, that's a federal German, uh, from the federal government of Germany, where you, where if you were working there, you have to buy your stuff. It's called Kaufhaus des Bundes. And most people seem to have bought the ticket somewhere in this thing called internet. We have to investigate on how this work it works. Um, yeah, we then ask in this anonymous exit interview whether the people would give us their Mastodon handle. Um, we were surprised that 11% did not have Mastodon, and we were even surprised that, more surprised that 25% of attendees or qu people who answered our questions um, gave us their Mastodon handle for an anonymous exit interview. But yeah, well, thank you for that. We will think about what to do with those handles. <laughs> Um, so, and then there were some rather difficult questions. As you know, we have large services here which are doing a great, amazing job every year. You heard most of those just today on this uh, stage. And we booked one of the core services in the Congress, which is the phone network. Currently, as you know, the phone network is sponsored by the organizational crew, by the Projektleitung, of course. Um, but in the future, it could be that due to budgetary reasons or others, we would have to our, um, ask for a small fee. So we ask our attendees and the people who answered in the survey whether they would be willing to pay for the service of the event phone. And we are really happy that only 25% said they wouldn't pay for the service. And most people said they would actually give some like chip in five euros or something. So big hint for the event phone, you can increase your service costs and it will still be payable. Of course, we won't do that. Um, but then we ask another question, which is also really interesting. Um, so as you know, there is some internet and network services provided here. And it could be that we have to uh, um, get money for those as well. So we asked the people, how do you want to pay for the internet at the Congress? And we gave them four answers they could answer. Uh, one is uh, based by time, so how long you use it, um, which is the blue one, only 10%. 17% um, would be uh, willing to pay on a volume base, so probably they don't use it that much. Um, that won't be the pixel flute guys. And 29% um, claimed they would pay for a per device cost, so like per MAC address or something like that. And 41% would be willing to pay by consuming at a bar. So we offered them the chance of buying a mate and then getting like three hours of internet. And 49, no, 41% said, well, I would do that. So thank you for being able to help here. Um, so, and then as you know, having the Congress is really, really expensive. So we looked into how could we lower the cost. And there is, of course, the European Union, which has some things like the European Stability Fund, where they give you money if you um, do things in areas with less developed economy. So one of the ideas would be, OK, let's move the Congress to areas where the economy is not that modern, not that good, like Bavaria or something. And <laughs> 
So we ask, how long would the people be willing to travel to another Congress location? And of course, they had to give us the answer in nautical miles because it's the European Union thing. Don't ask. Wait, don't know. I didn't make the questionnaire. It's just something. Um, most people were able to calculate the miles. Great for that. And most people were also willing to go to Bavaria, as you can see. <laughs> Um, then we ask, of course, how the people arrived here, which is also a really important question. And we try to give the, um, when we made it up, we tried to get the best answers so that people really found their way. Um, some arrived by boat, or claimed to be. Some people arrived by plane, some by bus, some by truck. Um, and strangely, 85% used some other transport vehicle we didn't think of. Um, so sorry that this statistic is not, statistic is not really helpful. <laughs> Um, yeah, and as I said, it's a customer satisfactory interview, and we ask, of course, on a scale from 1 to 23, how likely would it be that you recommend the Congress to all your peers? And we're really happy that most choose 23. So, thanks from me, thanks for having fun here, and thanks for all the teams which did really work here. Yeah. Hope to see you. Work now? Wait. Ah, yeah, now you can hear me. And with all of that, thanks to all the team. Thank you for coming here. And I've got one last slide from C3 Möbelhaus, which is like the team doing all the furniture, all the chairs. They will start dismantling everything in a couple of minutes at 7 p.m., but do not move any furniture or anything in this house without being told so, unless it's your own. Thank you, and see you next time. <laughs>